So four excellent matches so far. Just one more to come. The former champion, the veteran from Denmark, Peter Geda, up against the beaten finalist from last year, Kenichi Targo. In the men's singles at the Yonex All England Open Badminton Championships, let's welcome from Denmark the number four seed, Peter Hug Garda. Twelve years ago, Peter Gaeda lifted the All England trophy. And he's still in the top four seeds. What a remarkable career he's had. Not only a former champion, but reached the final in 2004. And his opponent from Japan, Kenichi Tago! Kenichi Tago, the 21-year-old from Japan. Making his fourth appearance here at the All England Championships. Beaten in the final a year ago, losing out to the world number one, Lee Chong Wei of Malaysia. But it was a good final, 21-19, We seem to remember that the final point dispute on the line call. We have, of course, had the advantage of seeing it again, but it was called out. Been left. And we can't clearly see that a uh, judgment has been made. So the 34 year old Peter Hall, get up. Kenichi, racket or shuffle? Racket. Racket. Eric Lickfoot of the Netherlands, the umpire. Yes, sir. So Peter Gaida has won the toss and the decided to serve. I have to say, Ian, I don't really understand that nowadays because there's bound to be a difference in ends and as soon as you can score points on every rally, you don't need to serve anymore. I'm su surprised that players don't always change their, uh, choose their favourite end to start or finish it, it seems odd to me. I think it's a psychological thing. I think some players see it as a positive move. So looking at Peter Gader's seeding, number four in the world and number four seed. Former champion, win-loss record for the year in the positive because of course he reached the final of the Super Series finals. Last year, played at the beginning of this year in Taipei, lost in the final to Lee Chong Wei. Missed the Malaysian Open because of that, the first of the Super Series events. Very little time for European players to return from the Super Series finals to Europe and then get ready for the Malaysian Open. And therefore, Peter Gaeta missing that particular event and spending time before going to Korea. Well, can't be many players on the tour with that number of matches under their belts. He is the reigning European champion, five times European champion, and no problems in hurt. His first match against Hu Yun of Hong Kong, two straight games in just 35 minutes of play. So his opponent. Kenichi Targo, 13 years, the Danes junior. 21 year old, not seeded, and indeed he wasn't seeded last year when he reached the final. World ranking up one place from last week, now at number 10. But we always knew that he'd got potential. First ever Japanese player to win the Asian Junior Championships, which he did in 2006 and then silver medalist at the World Junior Championships a year later in 2007. Well, his first match against Wacha of Poland 
Well, that was even quicker than Gator's match because he just needed 33 minutes to secure that victory. 21-12, 21 21-19. So Kuda Gator, having won their two previous encounters, and both of them in straight games, the last was in the semi-final of the Hong Kong Open in 2009. And it's really quite surprising that they haven't met since then. Over a year since they met each other. Also played at the French Open that same year, 2009. So there's our umpire. Lickfoot of the Netherlands. Yes, Solomon, the service judge from England. Peter Gaida. Time for the championship medals. One silver. That was in Seville ten years ago. Three bronze medals, including last year. And what is quite remarkable about this day is that last year he played 10 tournaments and he reached the semi-final, at least the semi-final, in all 10. And that is remarkable for a man that is now the age of 34. Just extraordinary. First world number one back in Ladies and gentlemen, 1997. on my right, Kenichi Tago, Japan. On my left, his or her person, Denmark. His or her girl to serve, Lovell, play. Well, the European champion, Peter Guerra. Very, very popular player all around the world. Big fan here of the English crowd. His longevity in the sport, not just the fact that he's played for so Long many years, off. but, you know, 13 years since he was first world number one. He's obviously not world number one now, but he's still in the top four in the world. That's just incredible. Yes, and it's, it's a credit to his professionalism over the years. He's someone who's always looked after himself very, very well. He's very, very good at preparing himself for, for events over the last two or three years. He's cut his tournament schedule down to make sure that when he does play, he's very prepared and ready, ready to perform at his highest levels. Two, one. But he's still a very, very dangerous opponent. Tactically very, very clever, reads the game very well. Service over. You can see already that tactically what he Two. wants to do is not give Targo time on the shuttle, he's going to clip the shuttle down, he's going to try and frustrate him, make him play from below the net, he's going to use short service game, uh, not clearing, clipping the shuttle down with no pace, going down. Three, not to clear, look, just clip it down, push, clip down. Targo being forced to play from below the net height. That's a wonderful hand. Classic Peter, super spinning net shot, doing lots of spin on the shuttle, forcing the high lift. A great slice down to the line. Service 
Spanish Vineyard. Service Can't see on everything at the five, moment is Peter Greer. Thirty-six career titles, twenty-six of those major titles, even four Super Series. In fact, he was the first ever winner of a Super Series event back in 2007 when the Super Series came into existence. The first ever Super Service Series tournament was the Malaysian four, Open, five. and he took that title. Quite remarkable, actually, because if I remember correctly, he was taken to hospital coming straight off the aeroplane when he arrived in Kuala Lumpur. Wasn't feeling at all well. Came out of hospital and promptly won the title. That's incredible. Service over. Six, four. Again, he's playing a very tight game. Not wanting to give Targo time in the rear court. He's keeping a lot down to the net, trying to. Trying to get in early, control the front court, when he's in the rear court, no clear, it's all coming down. Maybe he's answered your question as well, the start of this game has answered your question as to why he wants to, wanted to serve first, Jill. I think he wanted to impose that short, short service game, be quick behind it and try and take the initiative early. I think it was a positive move. Long of that back line. Eight, four. As you can sense that Targo's a little bit stressed here because he's not getting opportunities to use his overhead shots and get some rhythm going in this game. He's been forced into a very small court game. Here we go again. And he has got the opportunities, made the mistake. That's about the first attacking opportunity Nine, he's had, but. Four. Just a little nervous with it. Of course, Targo, very famous mother in badminton terms, Moshiko Yonokuro, who was twice a beaten finalist at the Women's Championships in the Women's Doubles. 10 4. Well, Danish coach Niels Uar will be very happy with that performance so far. One of six straight points from 5 4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he has a lot of time to put his hands on the other side. And then Og så en gang imellem lige for overspillingen. Han må gerne få lov at komme ud og slå en gang imellem, bare han skal løbe efter den. Ja, jeg tror, han siger, continue this, don't lift the shuttle, continue with the angled shots. Down making his point of trust and turn, not giving Targa anything to really try and come on the rallies. Keita Matsuda there, Japanese coach. Former Japanese national singles champion. And later became right. a world class men's doubles player. Service over 5 11. I think Keita Matsuda's talked to his, talked to his player and said, you've got to compete on the net, you've got to force the lifts, got to get in there, rather than just giving the lift away directly. And compete on that front court. Yeah, there we go. Managed to get the lift. Peter this time going to the centre of the court using the shock attack to the body. It's a really good effect. He's one with the cross slice, he's one with the straight smash. And now he's thrown in that centre smash. 
really good variety. again just playing to the pattern that you had recognized earlier on those angles across court yeah a lot more patience there from targo though didn't force the play at all there happy to play out the point and compete on the front court starting to settle down a little bit And that's the danger 13, when you don't lift, when you seven. do let play the second net shot and let Peter come in. It's a fantastic touch. That's a great shot. forcing Peter to lift and when he does it's one of the rare examples we've had in this game so far but he has got a very very good attacking game when he, when he can create the time to use it that's great defense service over 14-9 a lower ambitious he was actually it's quite a good length, Peter hit, so Targo trying to smash from right in the rear of the court. Left the space for the counter block. Ball. 15 just nine. so astute. Yeah, he's just keeping Targo guessing the whole time. Targo doesn't know what's coming. Is it a cross slice? Is it a straight smash? That's twice now he's won the point with the smash to the body as well. Sixteen. He's not been allowed to find any rhythm with his rear court play, which is his real strength. It's just when he is getting opportunities, he's just forcing the game a little too much. We've seen him try to smash from a very good length. There we saw the clip into the net. Peter still playing great precision. 17-9. Not the body smash this time, it's the straight angled smash to the line. Well, that's his fastest smash of the day so far. Eighteen nine. Nine point advantage. And at the moment, the debtor today really making last year's beaten finalists look, look a little bit ordinary. Yeah, he's got a clear game plan, he's sticking to it, good concentration and good execution so far. Pressure, didn't try to force and finish with the first shuttle, just kept the pressure on his opponent. Opponent 
Chile could get higher in the court to finish. Display really in the open game. Eleven game points for Peter Gaida. Well, just 13 minutes of play on a run of eight straight points closes out the opening game 21-9. Indeed. So, yeah, Super the Bare to move your window for chance and I'll leave spiller and maskering. He's very happy with that. Stand for you for you the in slay at at Saka and Holly. That's why I'm coming to try from here or that's what I'm going to say. Yep. A short, short serve dominated from Peter there, concentrate on the short serve and creating lots of opportunities to attack and the overhead winners tells the story there, 9-1. to one. Creating lots of opportunities for himself to attack and then get into the net and in net winners and overhead winners. What's interesting to me is the number of very good rallies, with very few short rallies and yet the whole of that opening game over so quickly. Just a sign of Peter's dominance, I think, in that first game. Dictating the tactics. the Danish coach, head coach to the Danish national team. Lots of advice and lots of encouragement. And I should think the main message is oh, just continue doing what you're doing. Because tactically, he was perfect in that opening game. Second game. Level. encounters between these two players I had assumed in my own mind that the fact that both of their previous matches had been back in 2009 that Targo will have would have been able to just put those out of his mind because there's no doubt he's improved considerably in the last couple of years but it seemed to me in that opening game it was almost as if he just didn't have the belief that he could beat him. Peter Gader and once Peter Gader got on the ascendancy, well, that to me is another so sign that he's trying something it. desperate. He's, oh. he's not sure what he should be doing and whether there's... He, he really has the belief he can win. Uh, yeah, but I have to say, tactically, he's just been... He's, he's, his game and the strengths in his game have been clo totally closed out by Peter. Just clipping the shuttle down, not giving Targo time to get into rhythm. Targo likes fast, physical games. He's got great agility, he's got great power from the rear court, and he's just not being allowed to use use those strengths today. Two, Peter's really one. dominating the game. Really using all that experience he's built up over the years. The game's been kept Low net height. He's been forced to play from below net height, and that's really not his strength. His strength is the faster rallies, flat rallies, or rallies where he can get behind the shuttle and hit hard. And he's just not being allowed to do that. Well, 
Well, we know that the winner of this match will play against Chen Long of China, who received a walkover against the Thailand player, Sanson Boomsak. So again, Targo frustrated, being forced to play from below the net and really struggling there. Peter using the mid-court defence that time, Targo blocking off, but eventually forced to use the flat lift and Peter quickly onto it. Then when he gets the opportunities, he's just snatching Five. at them, forcing One. them. Five straight points for the Dane. Opportunities, as you say, to attack. Service over. Two, five. This is his game. That's a good net shot. Good spinning net shot. This time he's got time. And when he has got time, he's very dangerous. Oh, indecision. Yeah, it cost him dear. Three, five. Well, quite clearly, the longest rally of the match so far. Yeah, good patience from Targo here. Prepared to play the midcourt three or four times before he gets the chance to move Peter and create the chance to get his attack into the game. Targo, Five. for which he immediately apologises. It's a run of five straight points for the game. Five by a run of five straight points from Targo. One for court, please. Yes, and just Five's indicating court, that the court needs to be mopped of the perspiration. Targo. Thank you. Stated his ambition is to do better and more balancing than his mother did. Six, five. And if he does, he'll win a lot of Play. titles. Long of the back line. Service over. And he's in the match more now Four. here in the second game. He is, he's done well, but again, just signs of inexperience there. When Peter's had the half chances at the front, he's been patient and just kept his opponent late, and there, Targo feeling he'd got to go all out for the winner straight away. That, that caused the mistake. Into the backhand corner. Service Peter over. Gator. 
Seven, it's, six. it's noticeable, Jill, that the rallies are just starting to lengthen a little bit. Targo being a little bit more patient, finding ways to stay in the rallies. As soon as he does get time, when Peter's a little bit late there, forced to lift, when he's got the time, that's a very, very good attack. the game he likes. Service over. Eight, nine. They're looking to steal the defensive shot. Well, that's the sort of rally that gains so many points for Peter Gader. In the opening game, With intense pressure. signs of slight inexperience just forcing the play again that's a half chance he doesn't need to go for this he can just keep the pressure on Peter by pushing that deep into the corner keep Peter late but decided to go for the half chance and made the mistake net exchanges there. Both players getting good spin on the shuttle. And Peter coming out on top at the end. It's notable Peter's really tried to tighten his game up. Didn't want to give his opponent a lead at the mid-game interval. decision from Peter he's been clipping all of those down he's not been lifting in that situation here he's just been clipping those down dominating the rallies but as soon as he goes to the rear court Targo's very very quick to react and again shows the quality of his attacking plate How did he get that back? Oh, and then wins the rally. Kamichi Targo. Extraordinary point from him. And indeed, it's the young Japanese player who has the advantage at the mid-game interval. What a rally. Under pressure there. Just 
extraordinary backhand. Did a full pirouette. Near the net cord, dived, got it back. Not only got it back, got back up quickly enough to play the winning smash. Tenacious play from Kenichi Tago. His whole body language to me, Ian, is very, very different now in this second game. Yes, he's found a way in. Um, he's found ways to deal with Peter's play in the front court. He's been a lot more patient around there, not forcing the play as much. Okay, thank you. And eventually Peter's being forced to use the rear court 11, a little bit, and that, 10. of course, is Targo's strength. He loves to get behind the shuttle in the rear court and uses attacking shots, and gradually as this game's gone on, he's creating more and more opportunities there. Play. He just, just forced a little bit there. He wasn't really in position to play the big attacking shot from there. Peter here plays the high lift. And it's actually quite a good length, this hit, and Targo's really tried to force that. It wasn't really on. Defensive shot. Peter Gader. Well, he'd done the full pirouette before he hit it. I'm, I'm sure. Another look at that. Yes, indeed, he'd done the pirouette before he played the defensive shot. Well, I've seen it all now. 13 11. on the line. Yeah, good call. It's dangerous moments for Peter here. Really needs to close this gap up because Targo's starting to gain in confidence here. Service over. 12, 14. That. He's got behind the shuttle. He's hit the good smash. He's come in and that's, that's really not on to attack from from that position and he's just forced the play rather than keeping the pressure on his opponent. Yeah, again, back to the tactic of the first game, hitting the shuttle down, but not with so much pace. Gives him the time to get in behind it. Very, very good control. Oh. Oh. So quick to get behind the shuttle there. 15, it's really impressive. Here, yeah, look, he's right in the net position. It's quickly behind the shuttle and creates a lot of power with that smash. Peter wasn't in a bad position defensively there, but the power on the smash just defeated his technique there. Service over. Luck of 
the net forward wins the day. 14, Lance, 15. for the cross angle, got the help of the net cord. serve in the match so far. Every single serve has been a low serve. Oh. Mm -hmm. Serve is over. 16, okay. 15. <laughs> was just wide where you could just sense the intensity within that rally both players so aware of what a big point it was yeah that's a really high quality rally there from both players some super net play great reactions on the mid court both players at times forced into deep defensive positions right. Next two or three points are really crucial in this match Taking the opportunity to tell down and compose the thoughts. Yes, I'm sure Peter's really steering himself for a big effort here. I don't think we'll see him using much, much play to the rear court now. I think this is where the big effort will come in if we're trying to keep the shuttle down and keep control of the rallies. Play. Let's go to the rear court. Targo's there now. It's good. Service it's good. over. 17, great, great 16. Five the court, please. That's a great smash. Sixteen. Play. Oh. It's a wonderful angle. It's not the most powerful of players overhead is. The impressive thing technically, Jill, is that he's had to close the space down in the front of the court. So he's advanced his base a long way forward, but he's still so athletic to get behind the shuttle to, to hit these smashes. Yes, doing the unexpected there. 19, 16. Wide in the shuttle across court. And 
just not ready for that at all. Oh dear, that's a bad error from Peter Gaeta. 20 game points. Sixteen game point opportunities to Kanichi Targo. Short. Service over. Deserved. It is a doom attack. Next shot would have forced the short lift. 17 20. One of the game points saved. the line. 18, and 20. Immediately looks towards the umpire, looking for an overall. Oh, mighty close. Is there two game points saved. Another two remain. Saved by Peter Gaeta, and he's back on level terms. 20 all. 20 will more. require extra points until there's a clear two point winning margin. Five straight points now for Peter Gaeta. And had he saved four game points, now he has a match 20. point to secure his place in the quarterfinal. Extraordinary. Six straight points. Having saved four match points. And Peter Gaeta using all of his experience. The former champion from Denmark. Well, that is remarkable. At the age of 34, beating last year's beaten finalist here at the All England Championships 21-9, 22-20 the margin of victory and he will be absolutely delighted with that 41 minutes and he's safely through to the quarter-final once again well, really was very impressive played the big points so well Not one single high serve throughout the entire contest well, 
twice as many overhead winners from Targo in that second game, and that's why it was so much closer. Yes, but while he had a lot of winners, he also went for an awful lot of shots and made a lot of unforced errors as well. So I'm afraid the two columns do together for Targo, but a very tight second game. And Targo is a player who's going to improve and he'll learn from those types of matches that are more tactical rather than physical battles. And of course, that secures Gator's place in the quarterfinal where he will play against the number five seed, Chen Long, from China. So it's been a great day's play here at the Yonex All England Championships. Men's singles, of course, we started with the defending champion, Lee Chong Wei of Malaysia, had a very convincing win over Bao Chun Lai, the left-hander from China. And then women's doubles were a three-game match there. But how well the number one seeds, Ching Wen Sing and Qian Yu Chin, did to come back in that. Then men's doubles, and what a surprise that was. The former champions, Zheng and Li, beaten by the new Chinese pairing of Chai Biao and Guo Zhengdong. Then, of course, another upset in the mixed doubles, and Fuchs and Mikels of Germany overcoming the number seven seeds from Indonesia. And as we've just seen, the second of our men's singles, and last year's beaten finalist, beaten today in the round of last 16, and beaten by the former champion, the veteran Peter Gaeda of Denmark. Well, it has been a great day's play. Lots of excitement, lots of upsets. We, of course, will be back tomorrow, 1700 GMT, with quarterfinal action. Do join us for that. But in the meantime, from Ian Wright and myself, Jill Clark, hope to see you tomorrow. Bye for now.